Welcome back to the Earth Science Classroom. This video is in the playlist for glaciology, the study of ice and glaciers or glaciers. And in this video in particular, we're looking at the different types of glaciers or glaciers. This is the Earth Science Classroom. As a recap, a glacier is an accumulation of ice and snow and sediment. And in a given location, given climate or elevation or latitude, and it is moving slowly downhill due to the force of gravity down from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. Now, there are two types of glaciers or glaciers. A glacier or glacier is a general term, an umbrella term that covers basically any accumulation of ice. But based on the size of that ice and location and how they form and where they form, will give the different types. The two types are continental, which is the classic ice sheet, ice cap, or the cumulative general term ice field, or the smaller sized valley or alpine glaciers that form in mountainous areas and the valleys inside or within the mountainous areas of high elevation. So with continental glaciers or glaciers, you have the ice sheet being the largest, classification based on the area of ice coverage or coverage of ice which is between or over 50,000 square kilometers or over 20,000 square miles. Then you have an ice cap which is less than 50,000 square kilometers or 20,000 square miles and an ice field is where you have connected glaciers or glaciers that end up in or terminal moraines or the end and ice caps. When they combine together, we call them ice fields. So these ice fields can cover a very large distance and area. So for the continental type of glacier or glacier, looking at two examples in particular on the Earth, one being Greenland and one being Antarctica. Now, start with the latter. Antarctica is a continent all by itself. It is a massive landmass and it is covered with ice of various degrees of thickness and age, some ranging in the thinner areas towards the coastlines or the ice shelves to the in excess of 3,000 meters in the center of the continent. And this is a very large expanse of ice and, and glacier ice accumulation in general, which is over 13.8 million square kilometers, which is about 4 million square kilometers bigger than the United States of America. So it's a very large expanse of ice. You don't really get to appreciate that because you usually see a section of it at the bottom of globes or Google Earth until you actually move the planet and see the entire expanse of this ice. It really is a very large area. And Antarctica is a great example for this continental ice sheet or glacier where you do have the ice fields, you have the various glaciers, the frozen parts that are moving towards the ocean, and then you have the uh, ice shelves and the sea ice accumulation around the edge of the coastlines with the Southern Ocean being so cold. And you also have the carving, uh, carving of the ice into icebergs or various sized bergs floating off into the ocean. So Antarctica has the majority of the glaciers or the continental glaciers in the world. And the next biggest accumulation of continental glaciers is Greenland. Now Greenland is a large island in Northern Hemisphere operated and owned by Denmark and it is an amazingly large amount of glacial ice, ice sheets and it has its own ice shelves and icebergs and all the same thing as Antarctica but it's just a smaller scale than Antarctica. But it does have the sea ice and connect up with the North Pole and the Arctic Ocean as it creates its sea ice over or the most in the winter and obviously a less extent in the summer. And Arctic or Antarctic sea ice, the ice that accumulates in the Southern Hemisphere or Northern Hemisphere, mostly in the winter seasons or months, you're looking at sea ice being not really part of a type of glacier or glacier, but really in a, a, an elongation or a connected part of that frozen ice component that we look at with glaciology. Then our other type of glacier or glacier is our alpine glacier or a valley glacier or glacier. 
Now, these accumulate and form in high mountainous regions of high elevation where you have a lot of precipitation and snow throughout the year, obviously more in the winter versus the summer. But you have this, this accumulation of ice and snow high up in the mountains, in the valleys, and it flows down and moves down, accumulates in the valleys, and starts to flow downhill. So these are more the obvious kind of like frozen river type ice accumulations where you see it flowing over time with deformation with the crevasses and all of the forces and the you what you have is the the breakdown of the mountain rock and the the valley is shaped a certain way it's very u-shaped versus v-shaped with a river that's liquid water and not frozen ice and you have all of the erosional and weathering components you have all the depositional environments created between the uh, moraines the terminal lateral moraines with the eskers the drumlins the uh, outwash plains the glacial lakes the rivers that have started and formed from the melting and ablation and breakdown of these glaciers towards the end of their life at the bottom uh, in terms of piedmont glaciers so all these different terms and processes occur with these alpine or valley glaciers so these two types of glaciers or glaciers have obviously the accumulation of ice in common, that they are moving downhill with gravity and there's deformation and there's some melting, there's accumulation versus ablation where they can grow in size and all they can, all they can decrease in size and retreat. But the main differences are that the continental glacier or glacier is going to form on solid rock and be a very large expanse of ice over a large area like Antarctica or Greenland versus the smaller scale, very discrete accumulation of snow and ice in the valleys in high mountainous areas, which is the Valley or Alpine Glacier. And it's gonna flow downhill and have its own set of processes and terms in terms of the depositional environments and the erosional qualities of this ice moving downhill. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you'd like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.